Hey everybody, this is Robert and welcome to Outbreak News TV. And today I want to take a look at a very good story uh, in the CBC up in Canada. And this is out of um, Alberta, the province of Alberta. And the, and the title says, With Clock Ticking, Doctors, Pharmacists Come to the Rescue After a One-Year-Old Eats Raccoon Feces. Um, so, very, very fascinating story. Apparently, there was this couple in southern Alberta, and they discovered that their one-year-old had eaten some feces um, in a planter pot, raccoon feces. And previously, they had learned that raccoon feces um, can potentially carry a, a, a lethal form of uh, nematode or roundworm that's called Bayless Ascaris procyanus. It's um, other known, otherwise known as the raccoon roundworm. And I've talked about this parasite on the show before. Um, it's uh, pretty rare and people typically get it by ingesting the eggs. Uh, and a lot of times it's little kids that are out in the backyard and they get close to a raccoon latrine um, playing, you know, uh, in, on a, you know, uh, next to a tree trunk where raccoons have been uh, defecating, that kind of stuff. In this, ca in this case, the raccoon defecated in a flower pot in their garden. Now, because the parents did know a little bit about Bayless Ascaris um, and the horrible outcomes that can come with it, which include, you know, brain damage, uh, blindness, uh, and sometimes fatalities. Um, they went ahead and contacted their doctor. Um, the doctor and poison control both told them, you know, you know, wait it out, see if they get any symptoms, and then you know, we'll, we'll seek out some treatment. Well. I guess they thought about it and what they did instead was they had their veterinary, a veterinarian uh, test the raccoon feces for Bayless Ascaris eggs and the veterinarian said hey this sample has so many eggs uh, they were unable to count them all ding 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 that's very very key and we've seen cases of young children eating this high uh, volume of eggs and raccoon feces in the past and the outcomes were uh, not good. So uh, they took their kid, their son to the emergency room and they prescribed albendazole, which is an anti-parasitic drug, anti-nematode, anti-helminth. And um, According to the article, this needs to be taken within three days of exposure. However, um, albendazole is not normally available in Canada. And you have to fill out a special authorization um, through Health Canada. Um, in, in this article, it says because uh, the, the drug is made by GlaxoSmithKline, it's very common here in the United States, um, is not, uh, they never filed for drug submission in Canada. So apparently one of the pharmacies in town heard about the story um, through email and they searched high and low, emailed, uh, did mass emailings with other pharmacies throughout, throughout the country and eventually did find the drug. Um, and uh, they were able, they actually had the, um, looks like they actually had the, uh, the ingredients to compound it themselves. And um, anyway, it, it and um, well, hold on a second. It looks like, yeah, they were they were preparing the, the parents were preparing to drive to Montana to get the drug, and then this pharmacy in Calgary uh, decided they could make it. So, anyway, so 
the boy got uh, the first dose of albendazole 56 hours after ingesting the raccoon feces. And as what we know, as of the date of this article, um, the toddler is doing well and um, lo looks like they um, nip this potentially hazardous thing in the bud. So uh, it's a fascinating story in the CBC. I encourage you to check it out. And, and about a year before that, yeah, this is January 30th, 2020. Um, there's, there was an article also in the CBC entitled The Life-Saving Medicine She Needs is Cheap, Common and Unavailable in Canadian Pharmacies. And again, this was talking about albendazole. And this woman apparently has a parasitic disease that's uh, being reported on in Alberta these days called echinococcus. And I think the latest numbers that I saw is in Alberta, they've seen like 17 cases. This is a parasite that wasn't there not that long ago. Well, her problem is she has to take albendazole on a regular basis and they have to go through this special ordering process with Health Canada on a regular basis. It says, while albendazole has been on the market in other countries since 1975, it is not approved in Canada. Um, it says the J.D. McLean Center for Tropical Diseases, located in Montreal's McGill University, must apply for medication once a week through the Federal Special Access Program. Uh, in many cases, it's for patients who need immediate access to survive, he said. Uh, but there are also a few cases in Canada with uh, illnesses requiring treatment with albendazole. Uh, there is no economic incentive for pharmaceutical companies to bring the drug to the, to the Canadian market. And they say they have the same issue, they used to have the same issue with ivermectin, which is also a very common uh, anti-parasitic drug. But... Uh, that became accessible in 2018. So uh, they said, because um, so very few people need these drugs. Um, the example they used with ivermectin was before it was approved, only 25 people in Canada needed it on an annual basis. But albendazole is still not available. It says uh, GlaxoSmithKline can't justify the cost to stock it. Uh, so, so they have to go through the special access program. And uh, I'm sure when you first see something like that, you think, oh my gosh, it's paperwork, bureaucratic type thing. And uh, I guess it kind of is. This is from the Health Canada website and it tells you how to apply through the special access program for a drug that's not available or um, a drug that has failed maybe in some trials or um, a drug that's maybe not suitable for a certain condition. So it, it, is, it looks like it is quite a process um, that the physician has to go through. Anyway, so you can check that out for yourself. It's at Health Canada. And just, just to go off track just a little bit, um, on the Bayless Askers thing. We're gonna to touch on that in a second. There was this thing that came out of the University of Alberta just last week, and it talks about the incidence of serious parasitic disease on the rise in Alberta. And um, in a recently published review of known human alveolar echinococcosis cases, in Alberta found 17 instances of the disease diagnosed in the province from 2013 to 2020. Now, before this recent surge, only two cases of human uh, AE have been previously confirmed in North America. One was in Manitoba in 1928, and the other one was in Minnesota in the States in 1977. So that's just, we're getting a little off track here, but uh, this parasite 
kind of a dog. It's a coyote tapeworm. Um, it's popping up on a more frequent basis now in Alberta with 17 cases uh, in the past uh, number of years. And it's a quite a serious parasite also. Okay, but anyway, let's, let's get back to Bayless Ascaris. And uh, not going to go over too much detail with this because I've done this uh, on previous videos, but it's a roundworm that's found in raccoons. Um, and uh, the raccoon can have this parasite in uh, hundreds of thousands, millions in, in each fe feces he leaves behind. Um, and if somebody uh, ingests the feces, inv ingests these eggs, the egg will go into the intestine, the larva will hatch, and the parasite will not mature in a person or in a bird or other animals. It's, it's the definitive host is a raccoon. The larva just starts migrating. And some of the worst places that it can migrate to is the eye, and it can cause blindness there, or the brain, which it can cause all kinds of horrible neurological symptoms, coma, and death. So it's, it can be an incredibly serious um, parasite. And this talks about some of the risk, and it's by eating infectious eggs. And the worms develop to maturity in the raccoon intestine, where they produce millions of eggs that are passed in the feces. Eggs that are excreted by raccoons are not immediately infectious, and this is important. These eggs must develop in the environment for two to four weeks before they can cause infection. So if it is, if it is a fresh uh, feces, if you know it's a fresh feces, it can be cleaned up early, right away, and, uh, and, it, it, and it won't be infectious. The eggs are not infectious at that point. The big thing about the eggs are they are very, very resistant to the environment uh, and can survive for years in your yard literally years so it's very important i mean one of the there's very few methods you know boiling water fire or whatever to kill these eggs because most of the stuff in the environment is not going to do anything to it um and it's, it's a bigger risk in young children because they are more likely to put contaminated fingers or soil or contaminated objects into their mouth um According to the CDC, fewer than 25 cases of Bayless Ascaris disease have been documented in the U.S. However, it's possible that some cases are incorrectly diagnosed as other infections or go undiagnosed. Uh, cases that are diagnosed tend to be severe. Uh, as of 2018, there were 23 published human neurological cases in the U.S. and six of them died. So very, very serious thing. And... Um, to learn more about Bayless Ascaris, I did a fantastic interview when I had the radio show uh, two or three years ago. I can't remember the exact year. It was with um, Professor Emeritus at Purdue University, Kevin Kazakos. He's probably, at least in my view, he is the uh, world-renowned expert on Bayless Ascaris. And I talked to him for about, you know, 45 or 50 minutes on the radio show about Bayless Ascaris. And I'll link to it below if you want to take a uh, check it out. Very good stuff. Um, this man knows Bayless Ascaris. So I encourage you to check that out. Anyway, um, I appreciate you uh, watching today. Um, and I would like it if you go ahead and um, comment below, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends. And uh, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time on Outbreak News TV.